What's up guys, Asian here with another build video, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Stamina Dragon Knight DPS. So, Stamina DKs have pretty much remained where they have been compared to other classes between Harrowstorm and Greymar. That is, Stamina DKs are definitely on the lower half of the DPS spectrum here, uh, below Stamina Templars and Stamina Necromancers. Um, they do have a place in a Stamina DPS group, though, uh, because they do have a unique damage debuff uh, known as Stagger from the Stone Giant line uh, that they can use as a spammable. Uh, this basically opens up one spot on a DK tank, if you guys have a DK tank, uh, to use a different ability instead. Now, by using Stone Giant, you will be taking a little bit of a personal DPS loss just because it is the weaker spamble compared to Rapid Strikes, um, but in return, you are granting your group a little bit more DPS, roughly about 1.52k DPS per person. Uh, uh, so it is fairly good to have a Stam DK in group uh, if you're willing to basically make that personal sacrifice in your DPS to maintain that stagger debuff. But just like the rest of our build videos, we will not be going over any sort of gear that is reserved for the Stamina DPS gear video, which should be popping up in the upper right-hand corner right about now. So if you're interested in knowing what gear you should be running as a Stamina DPS, go ahead and check out that video. This video will be focusing in on the skills that we're going to be using, as well as a demonstration of the rotation. So, let's go ahead and get started here, first with our dual wield bar. So to push out the most personal DPS, you're going to want to run Rapid Strikes. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, you can use Stone Giant, which is under the Earth and the Heart line. Uh, this is going to give you a little bit lower personal DPS compared to running something like Rapid Strikes, but you do get that Stagger debuff, which does increase DPS across the board. So while you are taking a personal loss, it is going to end up with a group gain. So those are your two main spambles of choice. Uh, both of them do have a cast time. Stone Giant has an initial cast time and then three instant casts, and then it sort of repeats itself. Uh, Rapid Strikes just has the flat uh, channel time there. Uh, so just be mindful of that during your cast times, during your channel times. Uh, if you block it all, you'll basically be casting out the ability. You won't be able to use synergies or drink potions while you're in that cast time or channel time. Uh, so just be mindful of that. Next, we have Venomous Claws, Noxious Breath, Barbed Trap, and Camouflaged Hunter. You can replace Camouflaged Hunter with any other ability that you would like to run. Uh, for example, if you want to heal, you could run Beggar, for example. Uh, so... This is mainly here for the 3% additional weapon damage that you're getting. Uh, with the ability to proc Minor Berserk, that's always great to have in case your healer is not great with Minor Berserk uptime, but it's not absolutely necessary to have this here. Of course, if you do swap this out with something like Vigor, you will be giving up some personal DPS, um, but of course you're trading that off for some additional swap ability, so it might be worth that sacrifice. Then we have Flawless Dawnbreaker. Uh, while this is mainly slotted for the 3% additional weapon damage, you can also use this as a pretty good ultimate as well in trash fights. Uh, this is mainly because Standard of Might, our primary ultimate, is not going to be useful in all scenarios. So there are going to be situations where you're going to want to use Flawless Dawnbreaker rather than uh, Standard of Might. Uh, mainly, again, it's going to be trash fights uh, where fight times are going to last shorter than the duration of Standard of Might or places where you want the burst cleave damage compared to the drawn out damage uh, that the standard of might has instead. On our back bar, this is the bow bar. We have Flames of Oblivion, Poison Injection, Endless Hail, Consuming Soul Trap, and we have Barb Trap for the 3% additional weapon damage. Much like Camouflage Hunter on the front bar, you can replace this with any other ability that you would like, depending on what you need. Then we have Standard of Might. This is going to be our main ultimate that we're going to be using uh, during boss fights where we want the single target damage and the boss is pretty much standing still for us. If the boss is moving around a lot, then it might be more beneficial to run something like Flawless Dawnbreaker instead, but you do want to try to use Standard of Might as much as you can. Uh, while it does deal flame damage, or does not scale necessarily off of your CPs very well, uh, you do get the additional damage done modifier while you're within the area, uh, hence why you're going to want to make sure the boss is not going to be moving around a lot, because you do need to be within the area of your standard in order to make use of that additional damage done bonus. Uh, that pretty much covers it for all the skills. Now let's go ahead and talk about the rotation. So a couple of things I, I'm going to want to point out here with the Stamina DK rotation. First is you're going to want to make sure Venomous Claw runs completely out. And that's because of the second line here. The poison seeps into target and deals increased damage the longer it lasts, dealing 20% more damage every 2 seconds. 
You do want this to last the entire 14 seconds in order to get the maximum amount of damage and get your highest damage ticks towards the end of this ability here. So make sure you're not recasting Venomous Claws too early. It pays off to wait for Venomous Claws to run completely out before you decide to up it. Venomous Claws and Noxious Breath both last 14 seconds, so you should be pairing these two abilities together. Now on your back bar, uh, typically speaking, you'll be able to run Endless Hail, Poison Injection, and Consuming Trap every time you're on your back bar. Now with Flames of Oblivion, this lasts for 15 seconds, so it doesn't really line up very well with your other back bar dots. So you have two options here. You could just go static, and every time you're on your back bar, you can re-up Flames of Oblivion. Uh, that does end up overcasting Flames of Oblivion. Uh, which will end up actually helping get your stamp sustain a little bit, uh, but it also does mean you're basically losing some damage from Flames of Oblivion because you're not able to get that final hit on that 5 second duration. On the 50, oh no, sorry, on the 15 second duration. The other option is to let it run completely out, and then the next time you're on your back bar, re-up Flames of Oblivion, that is also going to end up being DPS loss because you're not getting full uptime on Flames of Oblivion. Of course, the third option is to break your front bar rotation and use Flames of Oblivion when it runs out, and then go back to your front bar and continue your rotation that way. That is another option there. It is a little bit more dynamic, of course, uh, but it will eke you out the most single target damage if you decide to go that route. Then, of course, you have Barb's Trap, which lasts for 18 seconds, so it doesn't line up very well with anything, so you basically just want to re-up this whenever you have the opportunity to do so. Outside of that, you're just going to be focusing on maintaining your Spamble, which is going to be Rapid Strikes. The rotation will look something like this. Uh, depending on how you want to do it, you can always pre-buff with Flames of Oblivion. Always want to open up with a Barb Trap, and then start with your back bar dots. And then again, you want to make sure you're getting Venomous Claws to run completely out before you're going back to your spammable. And that's pretty much the entirety of the rotation itself. Now, with the change with the Maelstrom Bow, now that the last four ticks of your Endless Hail pretty much deal the exact same damage, uh, you can re-up Endless Hail a little bit early, uh, just because you're not actually going to be losing out on the biggest sticks any longer. You are still going to end up overcasting Endless Hail, which is going to eat into your sustain, obviously, so it might not be something you want to do all the time, but it is a little bit... Uh, you do have a little bit more leeway now with recasting uh, Endless Hail a little bit early, again, just because the last few ticks here aren't necessarily any stronger than it has been in the past. Now, with that all said and done, we're going to go ahead and do a 20 million limit parse so you guys get an idea of the DPS that a Stam Decay is able to pull. Now, remember that a Trial Dummy parse is not going to be the same as an In Raid parse at all. That's mainly because the Trial Dummy is missing a few buffs, Minor Courage, um, and as well as debuffs. So, we're missing things like Major Vulnerability, uh, Martial Knowledge, Zens. Uh, if you're running something uh, like... Uh, Morag Tong, you're going to be missing out on the Morag Tong debuff, uh, so you are going to be missing some buffs and debuffs when you're parsing on the Trial Dummy. In addition, the Trial Dummy doesn't hit back, it just stands there and just lets you parse, uh, so obviously in a Trial you have to deal with mechanics, uh, you like moving around a lot, so that'll also eat into your DPS as well. You should use the Trial Dummy instead as a chance to practice your rotation, as well as a comparison point to other classes, because the Trial Dummy does standardize buffs and debuffs across these various classes, with the exception, of course, being Necromancers with their major vulnerability from their Glacial, from their Colossus Ultimate. So, let's go ahead and get started. Remember to let Venomous Claw run completely out. If I had reapplied my dots there, I would have lost that last tick of Venomous Claws, which is the strongest tick, so we don't necessarily want to lose that uh, tick at all.
Apparently I bar swapped a little bit too early there. My poison injection didn't go off. Right, we're gonna just reset our rotation here a little bit. That was the first time I ever managed to do that. We're gonna swap to our black bar really quick and get all of our ultimates. We're not sitting on it for too long. Don't want to necessarily be sitting on our ultimate because we're not obviously generating the ultimate for the second ultimate we're getting. If you wanted to break your front bar rotation to recast Flames of Oblivion, that's how you would do it. And it's up to you whether you want to do that or not. It is going to be dynamic, and it's only one ability, so it might as well be... It might be worth doing it. But it's up to you personally whether you want to try to do that or not. So it does require a little bit more micromanagement on your part in order to maintain the rotation. Now, execute, we're not going to be changing anything. Stand the case, don't have an execute. I always try to bar swap cancel uh, out of the standard uh, animation. So if I have my standard up, it's always going to be the last ability that I use on my back bar. Just so I can cancel out of animation, because the animation itself is actually pretty long. My sustain seems to be very good. Oh, I might have forgotten to add a weapon damage enchant on my Maelstrom Bow, actually. Not a big deal. We're not gonna get a standard up, so we're just gonna use our flaw stunbreaker here and execute. So we're actually missing uh, a couple thousand DPS because I don't think I changed out of a weapon damage enchant for my maelstrom bow. But we are in execute, so not changing our rotation at all. MDKs don't have an execute. Yeah, we're gonna end up losing about 2k DPS or so. So we're gonna add 2k to the end of this parse here. Alright, there we go. Uh, let me just double check my equipment really quick. Yep, I forgot to switch the enchant from my Maelstrom bow, so we're, we're running Absorb Stamina versus a Weapon Damage enchant. Should explain why my sustain felt so good. Uh, so we'll just add about 2k or so additional DPS, maybe 3k, just because of the Weapon Damage enchant, but just keep in mind that your sustain is going to end up dropping a little bit. But even with the Absorb Stamina enchant here, we were pulling about 80.6k or so, which is still very respectable. So if we were to add in the Weapon Damage enchant, we would be pulling probably around 82 to 83k instead, somewhere within that range. Um, so still pretty respectable, but definitely lower than your Stamina Templar and your Stamina... Uh, Necromancer and Stamina Nightblades. So, like I said at the beginning of the video, Stamina Decays tend to be on the bottom half of the Stamina DPS sort of tier list, if you want to call it that, uh, but it's still plenty of DPS. It's enough to clear pretty much all content in the game. And again, you're going to be the most consistent source of that stagger debuff, so you still have an important place in Stamina groups if your DK tank doesn't have the capability of maintaining good uptimes on that stagger debuff. It might be worth swapping out a Stam DPS for a Stam DK, uh, in order to maintain better uptime on that debuff. That pretty much concludes it for this build video. If you guys have any questions at all, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next dungeon.